Welcome to Subzy Life. Conscious, Conscious Living, Living with, with the, the twist. twist. My name's Faison Subzali. And I'm Dr. Syra, and I'm a psychotherapist. And I am a technology consultant. Um, and we're sitting in a car today, mm-hmm. uh, recording a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, with a beautiful view yeah, of so, the lake. So yes, so we, we, we moved our couch <laughs> into the car, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> on the road trying to record this uh record this conversation um so sarah what do you want to talk about today well we were trying to figure out what it is that we want to talk about and just before we started recording we were talking about some really juicy things but i know you phase didn't really want to get into this again this week um but our son's in the car with us and he said just keep talking about what you're talking about <laughs> so we're gonna keep going and see where it goes Okay, and what were we talking about? We were talking about helping people who do not have the experience of being of color understand that racism exists Mm. and how frustrating that can be when we have to, when people start defending themselves and taking things personally and backpedaling and saying they're not racist and it's just so... And, l- and let's be clear, uh, we are coming from a place of, um, <laughs> we've been watching a lot of stuff <laughs> that's starting to... Educating ourselves? Uh, partly educating and partly riling us up as well. Riling us up. <laughs> yeah, but riling. I think that's happening for a lot of people. As you start learning about this shit, if you're not riled up, something's wrong. I saw a sign in one of the protest pictures that it said, if you're not outraged, then you're not paying attention. Yeah. And, you know, for I mean, for me, and I know I kind of briefly spoke about this last week, is that I just cannot get the, you know, I mean, we, we've seen people get killed, die. Have we? On die, TV. On TV, on Not shows and all that. Yeah, but to actually see a man lose a life. And, you know, part, uh, and the part that's frustrating is, and part that I'm, again, there are um, Facebook friends <laughs> who are posting stuff like, hey, he was a criminal. And even if he was right, like where, what, what society are we living in where that that justice is allowed to be taken away from a man just because he was a criminal, right? We live in a society supposedly of uh, law and order where hey, there's due process, and and you know, like these are these are the societies you you well at least I left <laughs> my parents left uh, we immigrated uh, because of to... the lawlessness and the discrimination and the fear and yeah. the life in danger and you know it's that somebody will take justice into their own hands mm-hmm. and you know and it and for me again it's this 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 thing about what justifies a man being killed right like why i don't care white black brown doesn't matter the color but what it just, does matter the color. But for me, what I'm saying is it doesn't matter what the color is. That it does not justify... You know, there's no law that you break that justifies death. There are very few laws. There's still, there still places uh, in the world that have death penalty. But even there, there are certain laws that apply to it. Mm-hmm. Right? You don't rob a bank and die. Like, they still don't do that. Mm-hmm. And... And so for me, that's the hard part. It's, it's that 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 justice, you know. Like we're we're now trying to defend our decisions as a society. Well, he was, you know, he was a criminal. So of course, let's do it. And so so when you're talking about this uh, guilt that comes to people, and we start defending ourselves, I've defended myself. Well, I don't want. I didn't mean to say that. Like. This is hard. This is a hard conversation for us. And there are people that in our lives who don't want to have this conversation. In our own family. In our own families that don't want to have this conversation because it's uncomfortable. And my point to them has been, and I think you've all also tried to articulate, is that our whole lives, that's how uncomfortable it is for us. Mm-hmm. It's like, I can't say this. I have to laugh when they call me a Paki. Mm-hmm. I have to just laugh it off. Mm-hmm. And I start making those jokes about myself too, mm-hmm. just so I can sneak my way in. Right. Yep. Right. I have to make sure, uh, you know, say, like, "Hey, you dress this way, you may have a chance." 
Right. When somebody you else speak can speak this way, you speak in a you certain way. You get this sort of an education. You live in these neighborhoods, and maybe you'll have a chance. Right, and and some of our family members have done that, right? Like it's like we were just uh, I was talking to somebody, like you know th- these are like oh yeah you know what I want to go to that school because why because schools are paid through property taxes, mm-hmm. and where property values are high, mm-hmm. you know we weren't invited there. We've had to push our way in. <laughs> right. We've had to push our way into those neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've actually been actively discouraged through all these systemic barriers. Like, so I was... Um, and again, exists- this is... Oh, I just want to make sure. Sorry, before I, cu- I... know I cut you off here, but it's... I just want to make sure... I am not comparing my life to a... Uh, to a black man in America. Yeah. And th- cause that is not what no I'm trying to do. There's no kind of comparison. Yeah. Like, we, I want to say that right up front, right? Like, we do not know what it is to endure 450 or more years of systematic, not only oppression, but, I don't even know the word, torture. People have been tortured and killed and murdered. And I think one of the things that's making me upset is that this is what it took. It took a nation watching a man die for us to say something. But communities have been watching men and women die for, for years, for decades. Right? And nobody doing anything about it. So I'm so grateful that people are actually standing up, doing something about it. Even if we're clumsy, even if we can't really get it quite right, we're doing right. something. And, and so, Or at least we're talking about right. it. Right. So how do we turn this into a positive? I don't want to turn it into a positive. <laughs> no, no, this is not about positive. Like, hey, yeah, let's let's put some roses on it and make sure that it smells nice. We know it's still shit. It's a pile of shit. It's not going to smell nice. We get it. But what's the step forward for well, all I of think, us? I think part of it first is to give ourselves permission to be angry. I was talking, um, so I supervise other therapists and um, we had our group supervision tonight. One of the things we talked about was trauma and how... Um, trauma any new trauma activates all the old traumas that's just the way that it works in psychology right so many people globally are reliving their traumas right now they are and we need to make space for that we need to make space for those stories Um, we need to be willing to hold those stories without judgment just pure compassion and not need to add your own fucking story like sorry white people this is not about you Even people of color, not really about us either. This is about Black Lives Matter. And we need to make sure that that's front and center in the conversations that we're having. Front and center. So I think, yeah, I think the first step, honestly, and what I've been doing is giving myself space and giving the people around me space to be angry, to be hurt, to be in pain, to express themselves, to tell their stories. We had a family call on Zoom where for the first time, for the first time in my life, I heard stories from my mom and my aunts and my uncles about the racism that they had experienced. And they never told us those stories. And they never told us those stories because they wanted us to feel like we were being, we were growing up in this better place, right? But the things they had to endure, it's sickening. And I'm learning about it now in my 40s because they didn't want to burden us with those stories. But you can feel it, right? You can feel like my parents don't really fit in here, right? At graduation when, you know, I remember at graduation, one of my really close friend, her mom shows up in Indian clothes, right? Because that's her formal dress. That's what she feels like is a celebration. And there's looks, there's looks and there's looks are exchanged by the teachers with each other, by students. And it's humiliating to see that that's happening to, to the people of your own background. So I just feel like... There's like one after another after another. And so when people say it does, it's not really happening or it's not about race, that makes me infuriated because it is. And if you can't see that, then we have like a bigger conversation to have. Yeah, I think that's the the hard part is <laughs> us, and including me, just shutting up and listening mm-hmm. and not putting in our like here's what should happen, right? Because the anger is justified. Mm -hmm. The reaction, as much as we don't like it, can be justified. Reaction. Whatever it may be. Like, the the protests are definitely justified because Mm -hmm. that's going to drive... I think, you know, one of the things um, I remember 
old and I'm going going back to like social sciences and all uh classes was that the movements that last mm mm-hmm. take a long time like you know like uh one of the things that irks me now mm-hmm. is everyone co- quoting Martin Luther King and for the last few years it's not like it's just just because of this mm-hmm. everyone's been quoting Martin Luther King he was assassinated he was hated mhm Muhammad Ali right he stood up for something lost his everything. lost everything for 3 years he couldn't fight for what like this was this was what he was born to do he couldn't do it mm-hmm. because he stood up and he was hated mm-hmm. yeah towards the end they love him now we love martin luther king but he wasn't loved it, he wasn't well, a love he was loved by pe- some people some people but some people actively hated but him. right like there was there were there were things that he had to put up with while he was alive he was assassinated right <laughs> like these are the things that we forget we forget our history but it's like the point was that the the movements at last you've got to be in people's faces mhm for a long time not for just a, a long week time. not yeah. just a month but ongoing right and um and this is not to say hey uh we need you know we need to be there to help with the change mhm we can't be and i'm talking about as a privileged brown man Mm-hmm. in Canada. Educated. Educated. Wealthy ish. Have enough money. To have enough pay money. Your abs- absolutely. Um I'm sitting here and I'm saying this to myself is that I have to be the one that that helps push for these changes. I can't be the one just taking advantage mm-hmm. of what the society is giving me mm-hmm. and forgetting everything that everyone else is going through. Right. And and you know I I heard this woman talking on Instagram about how it's 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 unethical to have other people fight our fight and we benefit other people black people have been fighting this fight for a long time and i think as um other people from other racial backgrounds we've been quiet yeah absolutely we've been quiet and part of that is that that colonialist i mean our families come from you know colonial india where you learn to align yourself with the majority group and you keep your head down well, they were not majority actually They were the powerful the powerful group yeah because they were they weren't the majority but they were the colonizers you learn to you learn that you have a choice either you hold on to who you are or you align with the colonizers and if you want success and if you want to move if forward you live. if you well if you want to live then you adapt the ways of right. uh, sorry it's the white people in every context that are colonizing right so i i mean and so so again like for me going back to like i I feel like okay we all have to stop. We have to listen. We have to educate ourselves on what's going on and we have to actively actively support those that are struggling. Not struggling because they chose to struggle, but this has been generations and generations and generations of oppression and discriminatory policies. Mhm. that uh that have caused that hurt and and you know i know one of the ways that we relate one, to each four, other zero, oh three, the phone eight, is one, ringing six. of course it is right see it's real it's real it's natural <laughs> we're going to keep going <laughs> but one of the um what was i going to say now i've lost my train of thought oh yeah one of the things that i find really um disrespectful is when white people try to chime in with their own version of discrimination that happened against them because of their gender or their sexuality or their um you know they were in another country and they were the only white person like it's not the same and so i would encourage any of our listeners who are not from a minority background like this is the time to listen and even those of us who are people of color who are not black for us too it's the time to listen and to give voice and time let other that the people who need to speak speak and, sh- and we need to like shut up and that's partly why we didn't want to talk about this because it's not really you know we're taking up space that somebody else could be taking up that that actually has <laughs> something more important to say but part of it is that we have a platform and so any of us who have a platform it's it's immoral for us not to use that platform for change it's immoral <laughs> so the last week <laughs> last week we were very like sad and we had nothing to say and there's these long silences now we can't like there's all this energy right and i think that's part of 
it's part of that well, process. There of is waking en- up. yeah, there is energy. I I, I just you know I, I'm gonna keep on going back to it. I know you and I disagree on this a little bit. In that, um, we are we all need to say something even when we're uncom- when it's uncomfortable I don't and we know. may we may say it wrong we may say it in a uh, in a manner that's maybe not uh, proper quote unquote proper um but then to be willing to hear it right if you're saying something and somebody points out like hey that was kind of racist or that felt kind of underhanded or that was a microaggression to hear it to stop and say oh I am so sorry. I never knew I was doing that. Yeah. I will be better. Well, I think, again, from a philosophical perspective, it's it's this thing about, uh, and I was just talking, I was saying this to my son, our son. Our son. <laughs> our Hi. son, yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's that, hello from yes, the back <laughs> That we have to be aware enough to admit that we don't know a lot. We have to be aware of our own discrimination mm-hmm. um, or discriminatory thoughts and behaviors. Mm-hmm. That it's not good enough anymore to just go through life thinking that we know. Like I think, if anything, this virus has pr- proven mm-hmm. as much as we know, we don't know a lot, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. Because economic policies and health policies are made up on the spot. We right. think we oh yeah we should have had this figured out, obviously not. All right, and and so as human beings, I feel like we need to be more and more able to admit that we don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't know what we don't know. So you think I know. disagree with you on that? No, you don't disagree with me on that. Uh, what I, I think where we disagree is that everyone needs to have a voice. I think no. I, huh. I I yeah. I disagree. I think right now some people need to shut the fuck up That's and listen, right? And that... not tell their stories and not make it be about them once again. To actually make space for people who never get to speak or are never heard. So yes, I don't think everybody's story needs to be heard right now in this particular but, okay, moment so in I, history. Yeah, I get that. I'm not saying voice equals story. Don't tell me your stories. I shouldn't be telling my stories. I agree with that piece. All I'm saying is that. Those voices are needed because the people that are in power or that are perceived to be in power Mm -hmm. are the ones that are going to have to uh, step up and instill the change in the society. Right. As much as I want it to be me, there are (laughs) limits that I have. Right. So, yes, we will need the... Like Faison Sabzali. Well, we will need... cross the border with that name. (laughs) Shoot. But, But we will need politicians to step up. And we will need those in power to step up and instill the change and and speak up and say, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. Mm-hmm. So, But we cannot silence that voice. That's where I'm going. Yes, we don't need their stories. We don't need my story. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. But no, we need that, that voice. And, that, and I agree with that. I do agree with that. Because I think one of the things that's been so heartwarming is seeing... The watching the protests and watching all the people, right? And, and you know, I've seen it a few times where somebody's talking, like a black person's talking, and people are actually listening. They stop, right? White people are stopping, brown people, Chinese people, all of us, other people of color from other backgrounds. We're listening. We're stopping and listening. And I'm, I feel like this is a historic time, and whatever we can do to amplify those black voices, we need to do as people of color. And I can't speak for white people. Like, they got to figure their own shit out. But I know as a person of color that I I can no longer sit back and be quiet and watch. And, and not that I did before, really. But I just felt like this lone voice in the middle of the wilderness and nobody was listening to me. Right? I was, like, talking to people and they're like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. That doesn't happen. And so I, I can also feel the the irritation of, like, Oh, so people now realize that racism is a problem now. Um, but some of us have known that uh, basically our whole lives. So, yeah. But again, you know, like 
you and I are ignorant to a few things that are happening in this world. Of course we are. Because we are not experiencing But we don't it. have that lived experience. Yeah. But are we willing so, to hear the stories? Are we willing to learn? But we are we willing to uh, read and right. know and be immersed in those cultures before this? I'd say yes. Yeah. But even then we had our biases. Right? Would you admit to that? That we had our biases? I, I, even I that? can speak for myself. I can yeah. speak for you. I can speak for myself and I can say yes. I did. All I'm saying is that we have to meet the people where they are. They don't. Some of them don't have the lived experience, so now we have to, uh, unfortunately, take the take the burden on of the education of it as well. Yeah. And that's a burden that, unfortunately, our black brothers and sisters are carrying for us at this time, is to educate us. Mm-hmm. On the history that we never got to learn. Or the history that was kind of overlooked. So so with that, I, I again, I want to I want to meet people where they are. I just want to be and mad. Yet, I just want to be mad for a little bit longer. And you are allowed to be mad. <laughs> and I think everyone like is... I'm just like, yeah. no, not ready to have conversations right I think now. everyone is allowed to have um, as... To be where they are. To be where they are, whatever emotions they are. But I, I, I will submit that we do need to step into the uncomfort. Oh, whatever well, is what uncomfortable. What the hell do you think I'm doing right now? No, you know no, I know you. How much I love being angry. How that's just a yeah. part of my personality. <laughs> Jeez, like I haven't felt this kind of rage since I was a child. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about others. That we all have to step into the uncomfortable mm-hmm. and look at. You know, it's like and feel that cringy feeling. Yeah, and feel it. It's like oh, and feel the guilt coming up. Feel the shame. defense coming up. Feel the shame coming up. Feel all of that because we've been putting stuff under the rug, and now the rug has been pulled. Mm-hmm. And now all it's that a big stuff. Pile of garbage. Yeah, yeah, that we got to look at. It's got to be clean so we can get to the floor. All right. So. I don't even know if we're gonna post this. It was pretty intense. Yeah. Are we gonna post it? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So, so if we post this and we've said anything to hurt you or offend you or rub you the wrong way, sorry. Um, sorry. And there's a lot of passionate anger up right now for me. And again, we don't know what the hell we're doing with this. No. Nope. Right? Let's be because clear. All we can do is draw from our own experience of racism and colonialism, which is different. It's a completely different experience than black people in America. So we're not equating it. But I can tap into that rage. Not to the same degree at all, but a little bit. And so here, I'm here being rageful. Um, but also, not just angry, hopefully to speaking out about it. And again, I want to go back phase. One last thing is that I think there's certain minority groups that have thrived by being quiet and by laying low and staying under the radar. And that's got to change because we didn't want to put our own self in jeopardy with, you know, the colonizer. Um, and so we didn't even say anything when somebody else was getting mistreated and so now we're saying something finally and we don't know if we're saying the right things probably not right so <laughs> yeah. uh let's <laughs> uh, i still don't feel like we're ready to smile and not worry so <laughs> we'll just, so just uh, keep feeling what you're feeling yeah and right. hopefully we'll connect again next week we'll see you next week take care